the memories of the very early years in the school are vague from being so young. I remember that my third grade teacher, uh, her name was uh, Mrs. Drake, and she uh, made an impression on me because I began to uh, realize the importance of learning. And then the fifth grade teacher was a Miss Harrison and she began to, uh, she gave me a real desire to learn more about music. Uh, that was one thing that she really uh, did a lot with. I had uh, started at about 10 years old, I started to, my, uh, to learn to play the violin. <coughs> uh, we were in a group class, so there was probably 15 to 20 of us uh, all trying to learn at the same time. And uh, uh, I seem to have a real very good ear for music and, and so if the teacher played the practice or, uh, or the item we were supposed to study or the piece of music, if they played it through uh, once then I could pretty well play it through on the violin and the only disadvantage to that was that I could get by that way and I didn't really learn to read music. I didn't know wh what the notes were and where they were on the page in relationship to what I should be doing on the violin. And I got by pretty good with that for those first few years. Uh, later on, when I got to be about uh, 13 or 14, I seemed to be good enough on the violin that, uh, that um, the folks decided they could afford to let me have private lessons and I started uh, uh, private violin lessons with a uh, Mr. Golden Johnson and um, I had only been taking from him for a few weeks and one day uh, when I came into the lesson I, he asked me to play through the number that he had assigned the week before and I played through it and and I made a mistake on it and he and he corrected me he says now you played an E natural and that's supposed to be an E flat and so I played it again and I did the same thing again and he says you were supposed to play an E natural and you played an E flat and I played it again and did the same thing and so he said he pointed on the sheet of music and he says, you see right here where it, it tells you which one it is and, and uh, I says, well, I don't know what that is on the paper, I, I can't read it and he says, how did you know what to play and I says, well, you played it through for me last week and at the end of our lesson and you told me what the next one would be and you played it through so I played uh, what you had played. Uh, except that I made a mistake on that one note and that's when he realized that I didn't know how to read music. So he started me right from scratch literally then and, uh, and had to go back and teach me actually the scale and uh, the notes on the scale and where they were and how to read music and then how to associate that to the fingering on the violin which then made a great deal of difference in how I could play because then I could start to I could start to play music reading it from music rather than having heard someone play it and then just copying them that uh, gave me an incentive and I began to play a little more in fact when I was about uh, 14 years old I started my own little dance orchestra and we started with about four or five of us that I got together and we built it up to where sometimes we would have eight or nine of us playing together and we uh, we got good enough to where we would play for dances for the Elks Club and for different kinds of organizations who held evening dances. Uh, one of the ways I got the music to uh, have that little band uh, goes back a few years because when I was in about the fifth grade, uh, that Miss Harrison that I spoke of uh, 
had us in a singing singing group and she decided that two of us in the group were good enough to qualify for a radio program that was being broadcast on radio uh, to help uh, uh, music with young people. And so uh, I was invited as one of them and a, and a girl named Beth Thomas was also a good voice and the two of us practiced together and learned a duet and then we were scheduled to sing on the radio station which was uh, KIDO in Boise and the owner of the station was Bill Phillips and because of uh, going down there and practicing and becoming associated and acquainted uh, I became acquainted with him and found out that the music companies would send sheet music or written music to the radio station for them to give out to people uh, as a way of helping promote their songs uh, to be used on radio. Kind of the same way as the uh, promoters do today with uh, uh, with cassette tapes and CDs and so on that they send to the radio, radio stations hoping they will play them. So uh, Mr. Phillips uh, was very nice to give me copies of this music which and many times those copies were complete orchestral arrangements of modern uh, songs of the day and then I would use those and that's what we would use to play uh, in our little dance orchestra. Uh, the results of uh, Beth and I having to sing on the radio station ended up rather interesting. The morning that we were to sing together on the radio, she got laryngitis uh, from a bad cold and her voice, uh, she practically lost her voice, but it went very low. So when we got down there to sing, she we put, went to practice through one time and she just couldn't sing the higher part because of her voice uh, being so bad. So we switched parts. She sang the lower part and I sang the high part uh, in the duet over the, uh, over the air. That was kind of a, a weird uh, situation. Uh, I'll jump ahead now a ways because of that particular reference. Um, Years later, when we, after we had moved from Boise and we were living in Ogden, uh, Utah, a good friend of mine, Dick Stevens and I, uh, would go to a, uh, a resort type place called Como Hot Springs that was up in Morgan, Utah, about 30 miles up the canyon from Ogden. And one of the reasons we would go up is because it had a roller skating rink that was real popular and a big swimming pool. And also lots of girls would go there as well as the boys. And that was a good place to try to go and, and meet, uh, meet young ladies. And um, so one evening we went up there and uh, we were just kind of milling around a little bit. and. Uh, Someone saw me and recognized me and, and said my name, hi Lumen, and uh, I turned around to speak to them and then a young lady whose back was to us turned around and says, I've only heard that name Lumen one time, would that be Lumen Green? And I says, yes, and I turned around and it was this Beth Thomas that uh, had, we had sung together years before. I had not seen her since I left Boise. And so we spent the evening visiting and reminiscing of old times, which is kind of a fun thing. And then just last year, uh, this I'm making this recording in uh, August of 1994. And so I guess it was just this last spring, in fact, in April of 94, uh, Jeannie and I have gone to St. George Utah, we belong to a, uh, a membership uh, recreational vehicle park just outside of St. George called Harrisburg. And we were there visiting, visiting and my brother and his wife 
uh, came there and Leola and Dave came there. They each have their own motor homes and we stay there and, and have a good time together for a few days. And the one afternoon, the park hosted a big hamburger uh, feast and they invite a lot of the town people to come out to, to it. Uh, one of their reasons is to promote and sell memberships in the RV park. And uh, one of the uh, ladies that came to the uh, hamburger fest was this Beth Thomas that I had not seen uh, since 1939. Uh, and she had lived in Boise and then married and then she and her husband had retired at, and moved to the St. George area and then he had passed away and she was living there as a widow and she came out and there was an, another one of the people in the park who uh, was from Boise was in the same class as I was uh, back in those days and he's the one that had invited her to come over and that was just a real strange coincidence and a very interesting thing to meet her after all those years and we had a nice visit. Uh, there was another lady there also from that same class and from uh, Boise. Uh, her name was Helen Marr Archibald. Uh, these are both the maiden names. I've forgotten what their married names uh, are now. But Helen Marr and I uh, dated. She was probably the first date that I ever had as a formal type date when I was 15 years old. Dad let me take the car. Uh, there were three couples of us went together and went to a public dance uh, resort place called uh, Warm Springs that was in Boise. It was out on the avenue and it was quite a popular thing to have uh, dances. That was the uh, big evening out and had a professional orchestra and, and you would go and, and just spend the evening, pay your admission and spend the evening dancing. Well, Helen Marr and I, that was the first actual date that I ever had and we were real good friends and we did date quite a little bit for that one year before I left Boise. But to uh, run on to these two people from the past, uh, I had my old yearbook with me and there were their pictures and also the pictures of the other man who was from the class which I hadn't remembered, his name was Harry Harvey and his wife's picture was in there. We were all from the same grade and the same class back in Boise from 1934, uh, that last year, 34, 35, the last year that I was in, in Boise. So that's a long, lot of years span in between from 34 to 94, so it was uh, fun to renew that acquaintance.